This video is going to go about showing you how to solo the Fallen Saber strike when it is the Nightfall. I originally put up a two-man video because I didn't think the Warsat was solable, which is the first part of this strike if you're not familiar with it. But that was before I had a Titan. And let me tell you, it is an absolute piece of cake on the Titan. First things first, you're going to want your super and you're going to want an exotic sword. I, I think Exotic Sword is the way to go heavy-wise. I would use that every single time. Obviously, you're running Bubble. And just show you the perks I'm running. You want Bastion on. Increases the duration of War to Dawn. You want Blessings of Light. I prefer Blessings of Light. You can use Armor of Light, but you can't really leave your Bubble. So just be aware of that if you are using uh, Armor of Light to just kind of stay near your Bubble. But the strategy, you kind of want to leave your Bubble. And then, obviously, Untouchable... Uh, lowers the uh, cooldown of your Ward of Dawn. You could also rock the Glass House, which makes your bubble last a little bit longer. But I would suggest uh, Helm of Saint 14 because you just you want the Helm of Saint 14. Unless you got Armor or Light on. If you got Armor or Light on, you don't really need Helm of Saint 14. But if you're rocking Blessings, dude, you need Helm of Saint 14. Sniper Rifle. I would suggest a Sniper Rifle, though you could rock a shotgun if you want to. And like I said, you want on an exotic sword. This is going to be showing you the Fallen version. There's three versions. There's Hive, there's Taken, and there's Fallen. For the Fallen version, focus on the ship. The second this thing spawns, you need to get shots on its guns. That needs to be your number one priority because this ship will absolutely wreck. You need to take out the guns. So take a couple shots, and once you need to reload, just crouch behind the war sat and hide. That will block his uh, attack from you. You don't want to get hit by it because it does a lot of damage. So once you take out the guns, don't worry about the adds. They're spawning, throw a nade or two if need be, but do not focus on them yet. You need to take out this dude's guns. And it takes a while, but finally took him out. So next order of business on the Titan, just, just try to kill some enemies. The second you're getting overrun or you're taking a lot of damage, go to the front side of the Warsat and pop your bubble. Pop in the bubble. Now it's time to go ham with that exotic sword. You have Blessings of Light on, or I have Blessings of Light on. You might be rocking armor. If that's the case, you need to wait for the ads to kind of come from you. It might be dangerous to venture out. But if you have Blessings on, you can venture out and soar them away from your bubble. Obviously, you guys know you've played the game. I don't know why I'm explaining you how a bubble works. But anyway, all you're doing is just trying to get your super back before your bubble is going to go out. And I got my super back, so now I'm just I'm chilling. We're in chill mode right now. We're past 40% on the Warsat. I have my super back. The second this bubble goes away, I'm going to pop my bubble again. And it's just rinsing and repeating that on the Titan. Now you saw there, I almost died. You have to be very careful. Bubbles out, popping it. And with the Fallen version, these ads will come to you. The majority of them will. And, you know, whereas the Taken version, the ads kind of stay at bay. And I don't even remember the Hive version. When those are up again in the Nightfall, I will be doing little mini Warsat uh, solo walkthroughs for you guys. Because I wanted to bring all three versions just so you could uh, see them. They're a little different in where you're going to be popping your bubble. Or with the Blade Dancer, which I'm going to show you, that's going to be a little different as well. As you see here, I'm cutting it a little close. So if you have armor or light on, dude, you have to be super careful. You cannot dip outside of your bubble. As I see this invisible guy, and I got my super back. It's really, really easy on the Titan, guys. I mean, you're basically just rinsing, repeating. You're popping your bubble, killing dudes with your sword, getting your super back, popping your bubble, killing dudes with your sword, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. It is super duper easy on the Titan. Again, when I had originally posted that two man walkthrough of this Nightfall, I didn't think the War Sat was solvable, but that was before I had a Titan. This thing is a absolute breeze on the titan i mean it's night and day so we're at 90 percent we're almost done building the war sat just basically chilling almost done almost have my bubble again so make sure you have that perk set up that i showed you because i did cut it close on one bubble as we're almost done got my super back 100 percent we can celebrate we did the war sat Make sure you have packs too. You're going to want to make sure you have heavy packs. I forgot to mention that, but I, I feel like that's probably pretty obvious. As we bail, we did it. You did it. So that's how you do it on the Titan for the Fallen version. Again, 
I know uh, this was up last week and it was the Taken version, but Solar Burn was on and that was not happening with all the Taken snipers. They, they all had Solar Snipers. That thing was ridiculous. So next up is the Hunter. And there's a little bit more strategy to this because the Titan, you're just popping your bubble, going ham, popping your bubble, rinse and repeating. It's super duper easy and there's not much strategy to it. The Hunter, it's a little bit different. I didn't think it was doable on the Hunter. I just didn't think you'd have enough time. A viewer on the two-man video said, yeah, you're going to have enough time. It's just going to be tight. And he was right, so I went and tried it out. I'm rocking the Don't Touch Me's. You could do Kepri Sting. I think Don't Touch Me's is where you want to go. You want those. And you want to make sure your strength, have your strength be Tier 5. And if you can, have your intellect as high as possible as well. But you want your melee cooldown to be as low as possible. So I didn't show you my perks, but you're running all the invis perks. Kneeling down to go invis. Uh, your invis lasts longer. I don't know. The, I forget the perk names. And then when you do a melee, you go invis. Same thing as the titan with the fallen version. Take that ship's guns out first. Now with the hunter, you're going to want your super and then going uh, invis with your super as well. I try to go to about 20 which I'm at 21, and then I pop my super, and we're just chilling. You're just chilling in Viz, and what I do is I come up near the front here. This is where this first wave of ads are, and I'm going to do my last in Viz, but they see me for a second, so they'll start to gather. You see how they're coming in? They're gathering, and because of a modifier, they have this stupid invisible sniper who's super annoying. But I wanted them to gather up here so they would come to me, and I could soar them, and I'm almost already halfway to my super again. Now with the Hunter, you have to kind of venture out. You can't just sit there taking shots. It's going to be tight. You're going to be close, but I got my super back. Now the second wave of ads is coming in. I'm at about four, almost 40% now. And you want to save your super. That super is a lifeline, okay? So this is where on the Fallen version, this is where the annoying enemies come. You got snipers and you got sword captains like this guy you want to take them out the sword captains because they will absolutely destroy you i'm just trying to hold on i'm taking damage okay snipers are coming let's use the super i'm at 50 percent of the way there we're going to use this super the rest of the way but i see that there are some invisible vandals over there to my left you don't want them to see you because they will all team shot you together so if you do have to go uninvis and go invis again make sure you're on the move so I see here, okay, I'm going to knife this guy. I'm going to use my melee next, throw a nade. Oh, I decided not to use the melee. My bad. I use the don't touch me's. Now I see that I'm low and a new ship's coming in on my right, so time to bail. You will have to do this on the hunter. You will have to bail to this rock right here, and I'm going to use my kneel down to go in viz and go right back. And then you're just rinsing and repeating using the don't touch me's, your melee, and your kneel down. We're at 70%. You're going to cut it super duper close on the hunter. You have all these guys. Do not shoot these guys. Don't throw nades. Don't focus on killing enemies. Just focus on setting them up to where... So I'm going to use the don't touch me's right here. You want a guy to hit you and then move. The second you think you're about to hit, get hit, start to move because the don't touch me's have a little delay. I'm low on health. I'm going to go to the rock. That ship right there, it's super annoying. And we're cutting it really close. We only got 36 seconds left to defend the war set to get this built. I'm at 84, 85... I'm telling myself, okay, I pretty much can't bail the rest of the way. Going to use Don't Touch Me's again. We're almost at 90%. I'm like, oh my God, get my melee back. I was doing this for like two and a half hours trying to get this on the Hunter. It's super duper hard. Using the Don't Touch Me's again. We're cutting it really close. Got 10 seconds, 97 using the Don't Touch Me's. The War Sad's starting to go ham. We're almost to 100. We're to 100. We've done it. It don't matter. I'm about to get wrecked. It doesn't matter if you die once you hit that 100. You've done it. It'll just respawn you. So for that fallen version, I popped my super at about 20, 21%. Then um, use your super and then gather near the front end and then do your last invis before the super's about to go. Those ads will gather. Use your sword to kill those ads and generate more super energy. Once you do that, you'll have your super back. Second wave will spawn in on the other side of the war sat. Take out any sword captains you can, and then use the rinse and repeat of the don't touch me's, your melee, and kneel down. When you run to the rock and kneel down, you can kneel down by the war sat. 
you don't have to go to that rock. I just went to the rock because my health was low and you got uh, vandal snipers and you got the ships coming in and it's very dangerous to stay there. You kind of have to bail to the rock and come back. You could use Monte Carlo. Um, instead of an exotic sword, if you wanted to, like a Monte Carlo could get your melee back really quick. But I felt the best bet was just to do exotic sword. And that was the strategy on the Hunter, dude. That was probably the hard, one of the harder solos I've done on the Hunter. Though it's just the first part of the, the uh, strike. It's um, not the whole strike, but the war sat is super duper hard on the Hunter. I wasn't able to complete it on the Warlock. When and if I can do that, if you guys have any suggestions for strategies maybe on the Warlock, I was thinking maybe doing the uh, Vampire build, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be doable on the Warlock. That'll be tough. So now we're going to continue on with the rest of the strike. Uh, there is a ghost up here to the left of this next little area, and I hadn't even gotten this one yet. So if you haven't gotten that ghost, get that ghost. If you watched my previous video from way back when, just showing you how to go through this Nightfall with two people, then you can just exit the video because it's the exact same strategy as Solable. Regardless of what version you get, chill in the tube the entire time. You are chilling in the tube. I would switch to rockets or sleeper simulant or a machine gun at this point. I would get off of a sword. And you're not going to use a sword the rest of the way. At least I would not. I would not suggest to use a sword. And you're just you're killing everything from distance. It's going back to the... Same old thing I say in every single nightfall. If you can kill stuff from distance, kill stuff from distance. If you're taking damage, just fall back and the door will close. So I'm getting wrecked. Okay, I'm going to fall back as I waste that rocket. And you just chill back here. None of the ads advance into this hallway. So if you're taking damage, just fall back. Door will close. Door will not open unless the ads are near it. And I've never had it open because the ads have been near it because they just don't really come up in this area. I'm going to kind of fast forward this part. I mean, this part is, there's nothing to explain. You're just killing everything from distance. And once the room's cleared out, we're moving on. I know this is in super duper fast forward, but not much to explain, guys. Just killing stuff from distance, like I said. This room's really, really easy. The hard part of the nightfall is over if you're doing this by yourself. That's the war sat. That is over. Now, like I said in the two-man video, same thing goes for this video. This is not solable every single time it is up. It always depends on modifiers. If something like exposure's on, trickles on, arc burn is on, it's going to make this solo very, very difficult to do. Little things will make certain parts, basically the war sat and the boss, everything in between, it don't matter what modifiers are on. Now, uh, you were seeing this uh, strike from last week, whereas the footage from the Warsat was from like two ago. Uh, this last week, it had Solar Burn on, and it had the f uh, Taken version for the Warsat. And it's nothing but friggin' Solar Snipers. It was impossible. It wasn't happening. I tried. It wasn't happening. So, there are going to be times when this is up when it's not going to be solable. So, like, whatever, <laughs> with every solo video that I have that I say, if you're familiar with my channel, if you have people to play with, play with this part is super duper easy you're just taking out the snipers from deep they won't really shoot on you just work up here you can hop on this so if arc burns on be very very careful on this part very very careful so basically what we're going to do if you didn't watch my other video is you're going to be grabbing this orb but you're going to wait for this this stream to go past stream goes past grab orb and then we're cutting to the outside lane. That stream goes past and just follow my path. Follow my path. You will not get blown up. It will look like they're close. And you're cutting over right here on the second cut over. Not the first cut over, the second one. So I'm getting shot from behind. That doesn't matter. And you just hide behind here. They will not advance past that point. I have never, ever seen them advance past that point. But who knows? Maybe they do. So don't, uh, don't quote me on that. But I don't believe that they do. So just take out the rest of the ads and you do that. I do that run every single time the same way. You grab it outside lane, cut over on the second uh, second cut over. Now you have checkpoints, but I have never ever died at this part before. Whereas I usually just run through, but I'm gonna get wrecked and die. Okay, but I was like, oh, I got the checkpoint. Whatever, I'll just be able to run through. I'll just yeah, I'm switching to blade answer. I'll go and viz. Uh uh. This sends you all the way back here. So I usually say you might as well try to run through. 
don't run through on this part if you don't think you can make it. You can, Titan, you can pop a bubble halfway up the this little room. Warlocks, you can do self-res. Blade Dancers, just go in Viz. But if you don't think you can make it, your light's low. Dude, just take the extra 20, you know, 20, 45 seconds to clear out some ads before you make a run. Because the last thing you want to do is, is have to, you know, go back two steps and do that second room over and then do the run through the little uh, arc stream area over. So I just went and viz to go through here. Most times you can just run through that area. But with the Taken version and Solar Burn was on uh, in this clip, it wasn't happening. So just be careful on that point. This is another room. Just run through it, guys. This room is easier to run through if there's a bunch of modifiers on that are super annoying. You just run on through here. Run on through. It's really, really easy. Now I'm going to cut here just so I can show you some ghost locations. I forgot if I showed them in the two-man walkthrough. So I'll just show them again here. So there's a ghost up here. You just got to jump up. Titan Warlock Hunter. Just, uh, just jump up the wall. And I've already gotten it, but there should be a ghost up here somewhere. I forgot which panel it is on. It's on one of these panels. I think it's right here on this corner. So if you haven't gotten that... You do have to clear out this room. It's a little dangerous to try and get that, you know, with the ads uh, up up and about. So before you go down to the boss, you can shoot open this crate. There's also a ghost back here. So it's time for the boss fight. I would either use sleeper simulant or a rocket launcher, maybe machine gun if that's the best thing you have. Sniper, rifle, and a good primary. So this is the room. We're going to be going, starting on the right side of the room. Boss is going to come out right in the middle there. And we are going to be starting on the right side of the room for his solar attack. Then we're going to rotate to the left side of the room for his void attack. And then he will transition to a arc attack. Now, the strategy that I employ when I do this by myself is different depending on the modifiers. If a burn is on, I always, always try and finish him from the left side of the room. So when he transitions from his void attack to his arc attack, I try and finish him. I make sure I have full rockets, I have a super, and I just go ham and try and kill him before ads spawn because that last wave of ads are sniper shanks and they are super duper annoying. So if a burn is on, I try, what you'll see here in this, uh, in the clip when I show after I explain this a little bit, the solar burns on so you'll see that strategy implemented if there is no burn on what i usually do is either go up on a little lamp which i will kind of show you or i go from left room to right side of the room to left room to right side back and forth back and forth back and forth the boss's third attack is a melee attack and he will just follow you so Start on the left side of the room, doing damage, doing damage, maybe get a rocket or two off. If he's starting to close in on you, then you're rotating to the right side of the room. And by the time you're kind of rotating to the right side of the room, this is when snipers will show up. And there's going to be two snipers. They will spawn two at elevated positions on each side of the room. Two on the right, two on the left, and then there'll be like two or three running around the uh, ground with the boss. I'm sure majority of you have done this strike, you're familiar with it, but for those that are not, I'm kind of explaining the strategy of the boss room because there's not much time to explain when you're down there. You just got to kind of go. If you're on a Titan, pop your bubble, pop that thing in the middle, and you're going to go from left to right and go through your bubble. Now, you can stand on the little lights right there. That's where I go a lot of the times with the Hunter and Warlock and the Snipers. Like I said, they'll be in those two boxes right there, and they'll spawn periodically in these in those elevated positions. Long story short, didn't do it on the first attempt. I <laughs> usually never do it on the first attempt with soloing this. Just going to fast forward this uh, real quick. You just kill the servitor, servitor on the right side of the room, servitor on the left side of the room. I would personally make sure you got full heavy and can pop a pack. And here we go. The boss is going to be coming up. And you have this cover. I'm using Celestial Nighthawk with Solar Burn. And uh, I believe Airborne was on as well. When I did this, you see that chunk of damage I did. So you're just going to pop off a shot or two with the sniper. And if you stun him, it will stop his attack. If you don't stun him, you have to be careful because even with Solar Burn not on, that thing can one-shot. And he's already moved on to Void. So we're going to move to the other side of the room. This cover will come up and just move on over here, get behind cover. I know this is going a little bit quicker with that first wave because Solar Burn's on. I got him off of that. That, to me, is his most dangerous attack, is that first attack, the little beam of solar energy he does. 
So you see here exploding shanks. So the enemies for the first wave are just, you know, the shanks that just shoot the regular stuff. The enemies for the second wave are exploding shanks. And the enemies for the third wave are the sniper shanks. So as I just choke on killing this explorer shank, I like to stay at this back pillar right here. Because the exploding shanks seem to kind of stay at bay. You'll have the guys that will come up from behind you from the little arc stream right here. But more than likely, they just will sit right there in front of you. And they won't attack you from the front. They'll only attack you from the back. So you just kind of only have to be aware of these guys coming up from behind you. And even them, they will stay at bay. You saw how that guy was just chilling. He wasn't even advancing on me. So basically with the void, void one, I like to just, as I choke with the sniper rifle, as I usually do, do a couple shots, pop out, and get rid of the exploding shanks. Do a couple shots. Pop out of your scope, get the exploding shanks. Do not focus on the boss too heavily. Now, if there is a burn on, you need to time this up. He transitions, it's after a third of his health, he transitions to the second attack. After the second third's gone, he's going to transition to the arc attack. So if a burn's on, arc, void, solar, whatever it may be. Wait, if you got to wait for a heavy pack, dude, just chill. The boss does not advance up here. You can just sit here. It's not like you're getting penalized for prolonging the fight. So if you got to wait for a pack, wait for that pack. If you got to wait for that super, if trickles on, then wait for that super. Because with a burn on, you're going to be able to finish him super duper quick before the sniper shanks come out. Now I'm just basically just waiting for my super and making sure I time this up. So just popping a couple shots. And pop out of my scope. Nah, there's nobody really coming. If you're taking damage, just chill right here. You control this fight. You control when he switches attacks. So if you're not ready for him to switch yet, then don't even shoot at him. So I'm saying to myself, okay, after I clear out this wave of ads, there is a little delay after you clear them out. I'm going to go ham on the boss. I got my super. I got sleeper simulant. Solar burns on. I'm going to go ham. So there's the last little shank. Okay, so ads are going to be gone for a little while. I don't know how many seconds it is, but it's enough. So he's transitioning. Okay, sleeper. Now I'm going to use my Celestial Nighthawk. Jump up. Golden gun. One shot it, obviously, with airborne and solar burn on. That does a ton of damage. And he's dead. You've done it. We've done it. It uh, With a burn on, is very, very, very easy to do solo. The boss, if arc burns on, it's kind of a pain in the ass. But uh, solar and void is easy. So if you don't do that strategy, you, you can just go from right side of the room to left side of the room to right side of the room to left side of the room. I also like to go up on these little uh, lights. Once you hop up here, when the snipers come, you just shoot the snipers to your left and right and shoot the snipers across. Then take out the few snipers that will be down on the ground next to the boss. I'll pause it here. And the boss, is, his last attack's a melee attack. So he can't shoot at you up here. You're off the ground. You're away from him. Once you take the snipers out, you're going to have a little lull time, do damage on the boss, do as much damage as you can, and then pop out of your scope, your rocket launcher, whatever you may be using, and make sure you're aware of when the uh, sniper shakes will be spawning. And there'll be a little message. It tells you every single time reinforcements are coming, reinforcements are coming. So just be aware of that when you are up here on the lamp. You could also use multi-tool. The multi-tool is really, really good for the sniper shank part because you're going to be able to like two or three shot the shanks and your way faster with the agility bump up. I hope this video was helpful and helps you solo the next time this is up. Like I said, it's not going to be soloable every time it's up. It's the certain weeks where it is going to be soloable and there's certain weeks where it's not going to be soloable. That's just how it is with this strike. It, this strike is a hard solo because of the war sat and the boss fights hard too. Um, I will be coming out with little war sat videos here and there. The next time these things are up, if it has the Taken version or the High version, so I can show you that solo as well. And hey, we got something good. Don't need it, but some infusion fuel. And uh, yeah, have a good one. See ya.